Hello everyone! We are hopping right into the Soup Singer Solo Scenario or the SSSS. Uh, yeah, not much to say. This is the opening room. We are surrounded by six allies and two enemies. So you know what this means. Yep, you can see there are four allies adjacent to us. So we are definitely going to be playing Tuning the Outcome. The top of that will give us four blesses. And the remaining 6 blesses will also be absorbed into our deck with Disorienting Dirge. That's pretty good, getting 10 blesses into your deck on the first turn while dishing out 2 to the enemy. So yeah, you really just can't give up this combo. Let's lock it in and start the round. Uh, looks like we've drawn a bunch of uh, modifier cards, so we'll have to ignore them. Uh, yeah, so we are only concerned with the guards for now. And they will be moving before our units at initiative 49. They are having they have the range attack. Alright, so they will stay where they are and perform range attacks. But first, let's get our turn going. So we shuffle two curses into the deck. And then we get 10 blesses in our deck. Right? So these are 10 blesses. We'll just put the whole bunch here and shuffle. And we're done. Next. The guards move. So, uh, guard number two, legal targets are number one on top, and for number six, they will hit number three on top because number one is out of range. Right? So, this is an range to a, a range to attack with base attack two. Sorry, base attack three. These guards are strong. Oof. Right, base attack three on number one followed by number three. We're gonna draw for number one. Followed by number 3. Okay, so we'll apply those. Alright, and the guards are done. Next up, our allies who will start moving. So, number 1 will move first and move to occupy this hex. Number 3 will move next. It has a choice between this hex here and the hex on top because um, they are equidistant. However, uh, the hex on top wins because city guard number 2 would be the target and it has a lower standee number. Also, it just hit uh, Bandit Guard number 3, so it's pretty angry and wants to retaliate against City Guard 2. Um, next, number 5 moves into the ne nearest tower, followed by number 6. Then our archers will perform the attack as well because they're already within range, and that will be that. They simply perform a move plus 0, attack plus 0. And what that means is that actually both the Bandit Guard and the Bandit Archer will be performing attack 2s on both monsters. So I'm going to draw them in sequence, which means that um, the first I'll draw two cards for City Guard 2, then two cards for City Guard 3, uh, 6, sorry. Then num Archer number 3 will fire at Guard number 2, and then Archer number 4 will fire at Guard number 2 as well, because it has a lower standee number, and they're both equidistant. So don't forget, base damage 2, the guards have one shield, let's begin. Bless, this is taken out. Bless, this is taken out. So to start off, uh, the guard takes two instances of four damage. So let's apply that. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right? Both mitigated by shield. Now we're going to deal with city guard number six. Bless. Plus one. So the first attack did four damage. The second da attack did three damage before shield. So four damage. Three damage. Next, archer number three hits guard number two. Rolling plus one. This is rolling, so we draw again. Plus zero. So total of one. Uh, three damage. So three minus one shield is two. City guard number two is actually dead. This means that archer number four will not focus on city guard two because it's dead. Instead, it will hit city guard six. Let's draw. Bless. So that's four minus one. Three damage. Uh, okay, it's dead. Well, uh, this round went slightly better than expected. Um, if you saw my... Um, me planning out my turns, I was expecting uh, to kill the guards perhaps by the third or fourth turn. Uh, certainly, um, hopefully within the first pass of my deck, but because I drew basically all my blesses. Uh, wow. They just killed everything. Everything died. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, I've also lost four blesses from my deck, which is... Mm, not ideal. I actually do want the blesses in my deck. But the good news is because all my units are alive, 
um, using Disorienting Dirge later will get me those blessers back in my deck. But first, round ends. And now I'm. Uh, it's time to decide what to do next. These are discarded. Alright, so after a long drawn out thought process, I mean, I might be overthinking this here, but uh, I just don't see a good way to approach door opening. The ideal situation would have been that one of these hexes occupied by the second row of bandit guards would have been cleared, say this guard was here. Then after opening the door, I would retreat to this space, which is really good because this particular space uh, allows me to fire off throw voice, which has a range of three, and hit the city guard here. Then the city guard would have no attack, but well, if all things go well, it would move into this room, and once it moves into this door, I have maximum attack surface area. I have two melee guards pounding at it while the two ranged archers wail on it. So that would have been the ideal. However, because this guard is in the way, because I cleared this room so bloody quickly, uh, it's both a boon and a bane, because now um, I'm forced to open the door and move back to the third row. This does not give me range to perform the throw voice on the city guard. And what this means is that the city guard will move in, perform an attack, possibly killing one of my guards to start things off, and that's not good. But I will have to take this risk, I guess. And also moving back is not a very good thing uh, because it just puts me further out of range of my objective. Uh, yeah, but it can't be helped. I, I really don't see a way around this. Right, the other option is remaining at the front line after opening the door. So I open the door and then stay on the first row. This is very suicidal because I'll be the main target against all these archers, against the city guard. Very suicidal. Um, yeah, and I'll just block this hex. A hex that a guard should be occupying instead because the city guard will be on the door. So it's a viable attack hex that my guards are not attacking from. And that's really, really bad. Right? You'll notice the layout of the next room is that there are so many obstacles in the way. So it's impossible for my guards to surround the enemy uh, to perform attacks. Because the walkway is so narrow. So the best solution is actually to lure the guard in. So this is what we are trying to do here. Alright, um, that's it. Let's uh, attempt this and see how badly it goes. We're gonna start with activating Power Ballet as the song and then playing Melody and Harmony for the move 3. Um, well, okay, so... Yeah, I'm supposed to do initiatives here, but let's not bother with it since... Um, yeah since the monsters are not, there are no monsters left. Also, I need to shuffle these in because these cards are not drawn. These are not drawn either. Yeah, I'm not sure why they were drawn. All right, so um, I'm just gonna resolve these manually. So Power Ballet is gonna be the song. So I'm gonna drag it up here and put it here. All right, so this will be a reminder that all our allies have boost, a power boost. And then, Melody and Harmony discard to move 3. The attack 3 doesn't come in here. I'll stick to the bottom. Alright, next turn, we are going to change tempo into throw voice. Now, you might be wondering why, am I, why I'm going at initiative 91 here. I could instead go at initiative 44, which would allow my units to act this turn. Counterintuitively, I do not want my units to attack this turn because if they do, what happens is they will the guards will start moving into the door into the next room at initiative 49. And we don't want that. Once they move into this room, they will die. The archers behind are very powerful. And again, very little attack surface area here. We want the guard to move into our room, which is why we act last, ensuring that our allies don't get a chance to act this way the enemies will get a chance to move into the room instead, which is what we want. I hope this works out. Flip the cards, start the round. Alright, uh, as promised, we are going to resolve change tempo at initiative 91 into the door. This is our first movement with change tempo. Alright, uh, we have spawned the new monsters. This is what's happening, but I think more importantly, these are the cards. So. The archers will move a lot and attack at range 4. This is actually quite bad. This means that they will hit something for sure. 
Uh, the gods on the other hand, the god on the other hand moves uh, one step only. One step, huh? I might have a change of plans here. Yeah, I, I might actually have a change of plans here. This is really crazy. Wait, 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 wait. So the archers move three steps. I'm since I played throw voice, I'm thinking of actually moving here and throwing my voice this way. So one, two, three, disarm these two. I'll get hit by these two archers from range four. Uh who is gonna move first? Two is gonna move first and will try to move within melee range of me, something like that. Then three will move. One two. This gives it range wait no. One is enough. Range four. Um, four will move one to well, it will move here, I guess, and then five will move upwards to attack me at range four. So I'll get hit by two archers for no good reason, and I'll be stuck in this corner for the rest of the game because this city guard will move up this way. Yeah, there's no reason I need to take this risk because. If I move back, uh, as promised, after change tempo, these archers have no range. These archers legitimately have no range. Uh, they are range 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. They miss everything. There's nothing in these hexes, so they miss. I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to do that. The city guard will not move first. The archers will move first, so number 2 will move here, as promised. Number 3 will attempt to move to... So at this point, I cut the video and went to look up on Monster AI because as it turns out, this situation was actually fairly complicated. How would the archers in this situation act according to Monster AI? I would like you to give it a try as well. Pause the video and have a look at uh, this map. The archers have an uh, action card of move 3, attack range 4. Uh, Archer number 2 has already resolved their movement, so we can ignore that. But Archers 3, 4, and 5, labelled at the side here respectively, all need to move. If you prefer the uh, Aluminium Angel top-down uh, map, here it is instead. Uh, the monsters are over here, with number 3 in the middle, moving first, followed by number 4 on top, followed by number 5 at the bottom. Think... And let me know what you think, or uh, put it in the comment section, how you think these archers will move. The answer might blow your mind. Pause the video and have a think about it. When we are done, we'll go back to the video to reveal the answer. Alright, so let's start resolving them. First, Archer 3 moves. Now, there are two equidistant hexes from with, uh, with which Archer 3 will attempt to move to. One is the one next to the door, that's obvious, that will allow it to perform its range attack, but the less obvious one is actually the one below the guard, the elite guard. By moving here, you can perform a range 4 attack against this guard here, so it will uh, move to one of these spaces. Both of these spaces are 3 uh, hexes away. One, uh, sorry, 4 hexes, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. Now unfortunately, for the city archer, it only has 3 movement. So I think uh, most people might think the obvious answer might be, okay, I'll try to move as close as possible. Oh wait, I'm stuck. My allies are in the way, I guess I'll end here. So this will put it with a, this will put it at uh, three distance, or rather three hexes away from its uh, final tau, be it this one here or that one there, right? One, two, three, it needs to make up three hexes. However, if it takes the bottom route, one, two, three, it will only be two hexes away from its destination path. From here, the archer can then attack at range 4. Because 2 is less than 3, the archer will actually prefer moving here because it will make more progress towards its focus. Alright, so it actually moves here, crazy enough. Now, the same logic does not apply to archer 4. If the arch archer 4 attempts to go via the bottom path, 1, 2, 3, it will now be 3 steps away from a valid attack hex, which is this one. Right? Instead... It, by moving here, it will also be, or sorry, by moving here, it will also be three steps away from an attack valid, uh, attacking hex, and so it will be a tie, right? Uh, whether it moves downwards or goes attempts to move through its allies, it will be three hexes away. The tiebreaker here is 
uh, the amount of hexes it has to move. By moving this way, uh, either here or here, uh, it minimizes the amount of movement it has to make. Whereas by going downwards, it's going the long windy path um, that requires more movement. So it'll prefer to, it's lazy and prefers to move less. So it'll move here. Number five, being very far away from its allies will of course move downwards uh, through this path. This puts it at one hex away from a valid uh, desti attack destination hex. So of course it will go down this way. So that's how the Archer AI settles. I can't believe I spent so much time talking about it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out if you actually managed to get the correct <laughs> uh, movement for this because I had to refer to uh, Aluminium Angel for that. Now let's move on with the guards, uh, or rather the elite guard who moves one step and doesn't attack, right? Uh, move one and a big attack, that doesn't happen. All right, and that's done. Now uh, I've already done my turn, so let's just discard these cards. Thrill voice is irrelevant, right? As we establish, one, two, three, I would only be able to throw voice with it for this three hex AOE here. The elite guard was here when I played the throw voice. Had I enhanced my throw voice with an extra AOE hex, I would have been able to hit it. Not that it matters because the city guard did not get to attack this turn anyway due to range. So turn ends. All right, uh, what do we do here? Uh, once again, stun seems like the obvious option, but I don't actually want to stun. I want the city guard to move in. Uh, however, however, I can apply the stun after the guard moves, thereby stopping the guard in its tracks for one whole turn, the next turn, not this turn, right? So I think that's really good. The downside is I'll be giving up the shield too of Echoing Aria, right? With Ar Echoing Aria, we want to play this as early as possible in the turn so that uh, our allies are shielded for as long as possible. This is a pretty awful trade-off, I must say. Um... I either get a late stun or I get an early shield. I can't have both. Not much I can do about this. So I'm just going to play both cards. I pr I'm prioritizing the shield here because I suspect the archers are going to um, wail on my team this turn. All right, so let's do that. And let's lock in. The ideal situation here would be the guard moving into the door faster than 49 initiative. That way, then my guards have um, maximum attack surface area. Lock these cards, start the round. Shaman. Ah, the guard just misses it at 55. Shame. That's a shame. Okay. Yeah, it just misses. Uh, my units will go first. Um, range minus one. Oh. That's interesting. Range minus one. So that reduces their range to 3. Wow, this actually works out in my favor, I think. I think this works out in my favor. But let's um, confirm this. So, first, I'm going to apply shield 2. So everything within... Oh, hmm. The shield 2 is not that relevant here, is it? Okay. I'll still apply the shield too, because there's nothing better to do. I'm just going to apply the shield too here, so we'll just discard this. Now, I'm actually thinking of stunning the guard here. Because if I don't stun the guard, what's going to happen is the archers are going to move forward, right? And, you know, that's just normal. But my allies will move next, and my bandit guards will start charging up. At least one of my bandit guards, this one, will charge up here as a result, and block the way my other guards cannot advance. So my other guards will sit back doing nothing. In that case, then there's no difference between whether the city guard is stunned or not. If it is stunned, it does nothing. If it's not stunned, it will not move, but it will still attack and strengthen itself. So there is absolutely no reason why I should hold back my throw voice here. Oh, sorry, not throw voice, my provoke terror. So I'm going to use provoke terror, range four, stun the city guard. Okay. So this is discarded and the city guard is stunned. Let me grab oop. Let me grab the stun token and award it to the elite guard. So that's my turn. Now the archers. One very nice thing is that the archers have pathetic movement. This time it's move two. And because their range is reduced to three, range minus one, 
um, they actually cannot move into a hex that can attack us. This is the only hex that they can use to attack from range 3. This hex doesn't cut it, neither does this because it's occupied. So what happens is they'll simply move forward. One, two, um, three, four, five stays put. And none of them can attack because range 4 would give City Archer 2 a valid attack line and so it will be the same for City Archer 3 but not at range 3, they are stuck. So this is really really good. Um, I really did not expect um, the archers to get blocked so badly. Uh, right, so archers are done. Next is my allies. Bandit Guard 1 moves first, performing a move 3 attack 2 on the city guard. So let's draw for it. Plus 0. That's 2 damage. Plus 1 from power ballet. Minus 2 from shield. So that's uh, quick maths. Um, one damage, I think. But retaliate one. The other melee city guards do nothing because they cannot get into a hex uh, at which they can attack the guard, so they pass. Now for the archers. The archers have range 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. They are one range short, so they will both move one step forward. This gives them a range 4 on the city guard. Uh, this does have line of sight. So we are going to resolve their attacks. They are going to attack with base attack 3 because of power ballet. We're going to draw two cards from our deck. Null. Bless. Alright. So the bless actually does 6 damage. Uh, minus 2 from shield. 4. This is why I'm using power ballet because the blesses really amplify the amount of damage you get into the city guard. Now the city guard's turn, it is stunned. End turn. We'll declare a long rest here. Um, normally this would be a great time to short rest because we want to get back in the action. However, um, without a question, this is a very... Um, this In this scenario, we need to lose certain cards. Uh, we cannot afford to short rest and have key cards randomly plucked out of our hand. So we're going to long rest and hope that things work out in our favor. Start round. Um, guard moves first. The guard... Shield 1, Retaliate 2. Ouch. Uh, this will definitely slow down our advance. The archers move later with very strong attack and very strong range. That is also a very, very bad card for us to see. So, uh, we resolve sit, uh, Bandit Guard number 1 first because they move before the archers. Bandit Guard number 1 performs an attack 3 against the city guard. Rolling plus 1. Bless! Oh! Okay, um, so base attack 3 plus 1 is 4 times 2 is 8. This bandit guard does 8 freaking damage to the city guard. That kills it! Even through 3 shield. That kills the elite guard and avoids the retaliate 3. Wow, what a draw. Okay, this means that my following city guards now have the way clear to move in. Bandit guard number 3 will move in and now start working on the archers. Um, same thing, attack 3, but this time they have no... Oh, they do have shield. City archers do have shield. Okay. So, base attack 3. Oh, that's not mine. 4. 4 damage, minus 1 shield, 3 damage. 1, 2, 3. Wow! Uh, this is amazing. Um, unfortunately, this blocks the path. The other... Bandit Guards do nothing. Now, for my range attackers, they have range 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. They are one shot. So once again, this one will move one step up. This one will move two steps up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, attacking number 2. 1, 2, 3, attacking number 2. Right? Uh, they will both attack for 3 damage as well, starting with Bandit Archer 3. Uh, where is it? Rolling plus one, two times! <laughs> wow! Wow, mad draws. Um, that's a one-hit KO for sure. Followed by number four. Uh, since this one's dead, unexpectedly, it'll next focus on City Archer number three, the next in line. So, draw. Null. Right, we gotta balance that out. We'll take the null. Um, 
we have four blessers left in our deck. That's good to know. And that's our allies turn done. Now the archers get their revenge. Uh, this is some really sweet revenge for them. So starting with archer number three, it has two valid targets. So it'll pick the one with lower standing number, bandit guard number one, and draw a card. This kills, I believe. Uh, that's attack four minus one is three. It is dead. Next, archer number four will simply stay put and attack bandit guard number three. Plus zero. Uh, that's three damage. One, two, three. Last one, city archer number five will stay put because it can attack bandit uh, guard three. Uh, I don't think it has line of sight to four. And even if it did, um, it will attack the one that moved earlier. So bandit guard number three is about to die. My turn, it's time to long rest. The one that I can remove is tuning the outcome, so that goes into the bin. And round. Um, I could also pull back Power Ballet. I don't see any harm in pulling back Power Ballet. Because this turn is going to be disorienting Dirge anyway, to restock the Blessers in my deck. So I may as well. Right, this gives me a bit more longevity. Okay, I'll pull back Power Ballet with the intention of reapplying it this turn. At initiative 14. Flip them, start round. Right, the City Guard is dead, so we can ignore that, that card. I'm going first. The Archers are performing Vanilla. Move to attack 3. And that's it. Alright, so we are going to Disorienting Dirge for 4 Blessers. Right, I want to do this before my allies uh, die. <laughs> so, four blessers into the deck. There are no enemies within range 3, so the curses don't happen. Power belly, let's um, put this back in the active zone. Archers, they have a range of 4. They will attack... Um, my Bandit Archer, that's actually quite annoying. My Bandit Archer is very squishy and will probably die to this. So we are going to draw two modifier cards for our Archer. First number three will draw, then number four will draw. Minus one, two damage. Minus one, two damage. Wow, um, I am getting really, really lucky here. I did not stack these decks, but yeah, my Archer actually survived two hits. That's crazy. Uh, okay, so... City Archer 5 will now attempt to hit number the Archer, so it will move here, and it will attack. Please draw now. <laughs> My Archer's alive! <laughs> okay, uh, we take those. Um, okay, wow, I called it. Okay, now my allies move, and they are going to get punished. Uh, they being the enemies, of course. But the guard moves here first. Attack 3. Bless. That's attack 6, which is 5 damage. This is one annoying thing about uh, the way this scenario is set up at this scenario level. Um, it requires 7 damage to 1 hit KO the Archer, and even a blessed power ballade hit from our guard will only do 6 damage. It's a bit sad. Um, anyway, the Archer should finish it off, starting with number 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 range, uh, same attack. Null. I'm drawing a lot of nulls. Followed by... Um, Archer number 4, this should kill it. Ah, overkill. Right, dead. I'm a bit concerned that these are whistling away, away at my blessers. I, I really need those blessers. And round. Alright, so what's appropriate to play here? Uh, this arm is probably in... Uh, yeah, on the menu here. So I'm probably going to Melody and Harmony to move myself into the door. And that will allow me to launch an attack 3 and then perform this arm on one of the city archers. I think that's a good thing to do. So we're going to lock this in and start the round. Yes, the archers move later than us, but this is a very painful attack. So we move first and we're going to melody and harmony this way. Analyzing the situation, 
Um, who will my allies target? This guy will move here and attack number three. The archer will attack number three because the other is not in range. Attack, uh, archer number four will attack number three because it's closer. So everyone will attack ar archer three and we want archer three to die. So I will actually try to kill archer three here with melody and harmony. Base attack three. Hello, <laughs> hello, the one card in my deck that actually kills the archer. That's seven damage, minus one shield, the archer's dead. Okay, <laughs> that's better than a times two. Okay, so that was perfect because this means that the top of throw voice will be used to disarm the remaining archer. So we will not be taking damage as a team this turn. I'm done. Now my allies will move, starting with bandit guard number five, moving here. Performing an attack. Damage 3. Plus... Oh! Rolling plus 1. Plus 1. So that's a plus 2. 5 damage minus 1 shield. 4 damage. Next. Bandit guard number 6. Move 3 steps. 1, 2, 3. Next. Archer number 3. Is not in range. It'll move 1 step to fire. 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, City archer 4 will take damage. Whoop. Uh, here we go. Bless. Dead. Cool. I'm happy that the archer is dead because this means that uh, my allies will not chew away at my um, blesses for now. That's a bit of a problem. I mean, those were some good draws by my allies, but they were a bit too good. Uh, there are only 5 blesses left in my 19 card deck, but I guess we'll live with it. The archers are all dead and round. Okay. Yeah, we are reaching the tail end of this scenario. Um, so, right, so basically what happened is I planned, with the way I planned the entire scenario, I expected to do away with the archers only after the s second pass. I did not expect the archers to fall so quickly, um, partially because I drew so freaking well, but, uh, it's also a bit of a risk because now I'm looking at my modifier deck, all the good cards are out, I don't have the plus four with me anymore. So this might make my final room a lot harder than uh, initially expected because the plus four is an insta kill on the target that I want to kill. But I can't, there's no way I can put the plus four back in my deck. So I really can't do anything about this. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of good cards in my discard already in terms of modifiers, but well, since I'm playing for this strategy, we'll just roll with it. Um, I don't need to draw from... I'm not going to start round because I'm just going to resolve this. It's going to be a move 5 and nothing on top. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll approach from the top. So that's done. And the following turn, I'll actually long rest. Going to long rest here. And take these cards back into my hand. Oh wait, I'll just put them here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. Which card am I losing? Well, you wouldn't believe it, but the card I'm actually planning to lose is Power Ballet. My allies have done their job, they have done a really really good job at that, but since their job is done, Power Ballet can go. Um, before I continue, however, let's talk about our room opening strategy. So, alright, um, I've reviewed my final stretch strategy. Um, and I realized I don't need to be standing right at the door. I can actually stand one tile behind. So this is important because this turn I'm not going to open the room just yet. I actually want to play Disorienting Dirge for the bottom so that I can curse and bless or rather cur uh, get two blesses in my deck. Every single bless counts. I can't stress this enough. So we're going to lock this in. Well, who cares about locking them in? Let's just discard them. Oh wait, no, no, no. Not change tempo. I'm sorry. Uh, Warding Dagger. Yep, that's the one. Discard. Right? And we get two blessers in our deck this way. One, two. Alright. Um, so, with that done, now we will proceed with the end game. Breaching these two rooms and killing the Vermling Shaman here. Alright. I'm going to enter the room using change tempo. And 
throw voice to disarm the golem sitting right here. I want to move with late initiative because I don't want my allies to, uh, you know, move forward and ruin my deck by drawing blesses out of it. So I'm going to lock these in. Start the round. At initiative 91, I'm going to perform a move 5 with change tempo. Right, so two movements into this door. Three remaining movements um, will be decided after I see the attack modifier cards. This was the kind of card that I was fearing the most. Um, and immobilize means that I wouldn't be able to enter the next room on my next turn. So this is exactly the kind of card that I was worried about. And that is why I played this arm on top to ensure that immobilize wouldn't happen. So two movements, I'm going to finish off with three more movements. One, two, three, something like that. And then disarm the stone golem. And now the golem gets to move. Well, it doesn't. It will simply move towards me. Oh, this is scary. Hmm. I guess in that case, then I would rather move this, uh, move three steps here so that it won't move towards me. It will just stay where it is at melee range and not perform the attack because it was disarmed. End round. Alright, so my next step is this pair of cards here. Both have attacks on the bottom, but I can only use one of them. The reason for playing it this way is that I want to have the flexibility to stun the monsters in the new room in case they draw some really nasty card. So I'm going to lock these in and start the round. This is going to be the most crucial round, both in terms of what this golem draws. I cannot have it draw and immobilize, but also in terms of what the shaman draws and yeah, what attack modifiers I draw. The shaman hasn't been reviewed, so there should be no cards here. I'm going to reshuffle these in and start the round. Okay, so ex I, what I expected is that the golems have a very slow modifier deck so that I get to go before them even though I played some ludicrously slow provoked terror. Thankfully that's the case so I get to move first but before I move I have to resolve. Um, Archer, well there's no Archer. So it's my turn here. I am going before um, using any of my cards here, I'm actually going to use the blinking cape right away. This is my door opening strategy here. I'm going to blink into the new room. This is a move four jump. So one, probably two. Let's set up the rest of the room. All right, so this is set up as such. So the relevant decks are the city guard here, which will attack at range two. Oh, the shaman drew a heal. Oh, isn't that annoying? Oh, man, I really did not want it to draw the heal. Now that will undo all my efforts. Right. So, this is why I prepared exactly what I prepared. Okay. Time to explain. It seems crazy to play two cards with a bottom action, bottom attack. Am I not wasting one of them, right? I either perform the attack four on Provoke Terror or the attack three on Melody and Harmony. The reason I played this combination is that in the very unlikely but possible event that the Shaman draws a heal, I'm able to stun the Shaman while still getting an attack off with Melody and Harmony. Best of both worlds, all right? So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, before I proceed, I'm, I'll need to confirm that this is... Well, okay, this has to be a hex that I end on. Uh, there's no option. The city guards will... How much movement do they have? They have one movement. Okay, cool. Right, so... I'm going to use the top of Provoke Terror. Stun. Then I'm going to use the bottom of Melody and Harmony, not performing the move, but I'm going to perform an attack 3 at range 3 on this Firmling Shaman. The question is, do I use my Power Potion here? I think not. I'm going to save it for next turn. So this is discarded. And I perform an attack 3. This will not kill the Shaman unless I get very lucky with um, getting rolling modifiers. All right. So an attack 3. 
bless. Let's send a text six. After three shield, that's three damage. This is good damage. All right, now let's resolve all the enemies, starting from Shaman. Stun wears off. Guards. This guard will move back to attack me at range. This guard will not move because it cannot avoid disadvantage anyway. So they will perform their attacks. These are standard attacks, so attack three on me. First guard, three damage. Second guard at disadvantage, miss. Next, there are no archers. Next, um, Stone Golem is performing, and the elite has two movement. It will move towards me. It will perform an attack minus one target all adjacent enemies. That is four damage on me. Five damage on me. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Before I ended my turn there, uh, I did intend to use my minus stamina potion. <laughs> I think it wasn't obvious, but, um, well, I'm in the last room. <laughs> of course I'm going to use it. So I guess it's obvious that way. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> I completely forgot. I should have resolved that before resolving the attacks. But um, what the cards I wanted to bring back were Provoke Terror for the bottom attack for, And actually the other card really doesn't matter. I'm going to bring back Melody and Harmony because it's an attack 3. So I'm just going to bring it back. Alright, so the turn ends. Um, I'm kind of badly wounded, but this should not matter. The reason I save Echoing Aria in my hand all this while is that I'm going to play here for the 0-8 initiative. Nothing more. I just want the initiative here. Beat all their initiatives and perform an attack 4 to win the game. Start the round. I go first, as expected. The Shaman is healing again, I think, so this needs to kill. This needs to kill! I cannot stress this enough. This needs to kill, and to make sure it kills, I'm going to boost it to an attack 5. This will kill unless I draw a null. Rolling? I haven't killed it yet! Bless. Alright. Um, that's... 5 plus 1, 6, 12 damage. I did 12 damage to the Shaman. This is a very vicious Soothsinger. 12 damage! Where do you come from? Dead. Alright. That's scenario complete. Objective, kill the Song of the Deep accomplished. Woo! Um, very, very smooth going scenario here. Um, a lot of things went in my favor. I really did not expect to clear the first two rooms that quickly. <laughs> the first room was finished in one turn. That was ridiculous. The second room, um, you know, one or two turns within the second pass, all the archers were dead. I was kind of half expecting having to ex enter the third and fourth rooms while there were still archers alive just because they were so tanky, but you know, having all the blessings in our deck really paid off. And while I took a lot of damage here, I definitely could afford to. Uh, taking more damage means that I just lose more cards, but as long as my damage cards were still around, I can always kill the Song of the Deep, given decent draws. So yes, the scenario is done. We are victorious. Thanks for watching. See you next time.